Hello all, my name is Krishna and welcome to my YouTube channel. Now from the yesterday's video that I already uploaded regarding Kaggle competition and uh, you could see that the type of accuracy that I basically got, I have noted it down and uh, what I will do in the next step. So initially I got this one was my, uh, you know, the root mean square error and with the help of this value I was able to get 2500 rank. So if you have not seen the first uh, uh, video of the Kaggle competition, um, I'll provide the link in the description box or it can also be shown in the uh, play card section, the top right corner. But now I perform one more step which is called as hyperparameter optimization. Okay, hyperparameter optimization. And then I was able to get my root mean square error to 0.13498 and I'm going to show you the code and after this I was able to get my rank was somewhere around 2100. Now how did I get and there were so many questions by you all like why did I just perform mean and mode, why did I just perform mode for category features, why did I just perform mean. Understand guys this particular problem statement right. I'm trying to show you how smartly you can basically solve a Kaggle competition. Now to begin with, if you, if you could have noticed, right, if if you could have seen the shape of our, you know, of our training data set, you could have seen that we just had somewhere around 1460 records. So we don't have million of records over here, okay. And if I just have 1460 records, then definitely I don't have to worry about like, you know, for the numerical values, what should I replace with? I will basically be using mean. I don't have to put my head a, I, I don't have to put my head on finding what is the interrelation uh, with respect to the other features and try to see what all values I can replace that NAND value with. Since the number of records are very very less, so what I have done is that for category features I have used mode. For integer features like uh, any floating point or integer values I have basically used mean. So that was one of the thing and so, some more people were basically asking why did I exactly use XGBoost. Now guys, uh, I have actually tried with every algorithm, okay. I started with linear regression, then I did decision tree regressor, I did with random forest regressor and uh, I did with XGBoost regressor. From out of this, I based on, uh, I, I saw the accuracy, I saw and I uploaded in the Kaggle solution over here, right. I submitted these predictions. Then finally I was able to get the XGBoost was actually getting a better result, okay, when compared to the others. So I started with somewhere around 2800 rank and till I went till XGBoost, I was able to get 2500 rank, okay. Now the main thing over here is that you want to get better score, okay. That is the main aim of Kaggle competition and uh, the outputs, the, I basically mean that this particular website is basically calculating the score. It knows the output over here, right. And we should try to come near to that output. So what all is basically possible, you should try to do that, okay. Now the next thing is that I still did not drop any columns because you may also have ha, uh, maybe having some questions that why did I drop some of the columns, okay. So uh, some of the columns if you remember I have dropped it over there because my percentage of the NAN values were greater than uh, point. 5% like if I say if it is greater than 50% then I'm going to drop that particular column I don't require it and same thing I'm doing with respect to my test data set also. Now if you have not seen the first part of the video please go ahead and see it I I will be providing that link in the descriptions so that you can go over there but this is the part two where I'll basically focus on hyperparameter optimization. Now what exactly is hyperparameter optimization guys you see this classifier right. Over here, I'm actually taking XGBoost.XGB regressor, okay. Now, if I press shift tab, I can see a lot of parameters, you know. A lot of parameters like what will be the max depth, what will be the learning rate, what is the number of decision trees that you're basically going to take within the XGBoost and many more things. So, I have to try to select the right parameters for my model to actually perform better, right. So, for that, what I did is that I, I have used something called as randomized search CV. If you have not heard of randomized search CV, I have already created a video in my machine learning playlist. You can go and see what exactly is randomized search CV. I also tried to use grid search CV, but randomized search CV was better, uh, giving us better results. Along with that, the execution time was also lower for randomized search CV. I tried it both, okay. Now, what I did is that I have defined some hyperparameter grid. So, this is basically my hyperparameters that I want to play with. We have specified n underscore estimators that basically means it can have either 100 decision tree, 500 decision tree, 900 decision tree, 1100 decision tree, 1500 decision tree. Similarly, I went with max depth 
I, I have given different values over here. Apart from that, I have given booster. Either it can use GB tree or GB linear. And from this two, I think you should be able to guess it. Obviously, it will select GB tree. But I want to just show you how did I perform hyperparameter optimization. Uh, again, learning rate, I have specified different, different values. Um, minimum child width, where a weight is basically, I have given different, different values. And I have actually created a dictionary key value pairs like a dictionary over here okay with respect to all these parameters and remember these all parameters are used inside the XGBoost regressor if it is present then only you will be able to use it otherwise no so after that what I did is that I went to my randomized search CV the first parameter is basically my estimator which will be my regressor that is basically the XGBoost regressor without any parameters with the with the default parameters and then there is a parameter called as param underscore distribution I've basically used hyperparameter grid and then I've told that use cross validation is equal to five. How many number of it iteration it has to do? What scoring it has to follow? Again, you can play with different different scoring if you want. Apart from that, it has I have just uh, you know I have to get the training score also. So I've written this. Now as soon as I execute this, it will probably take around five minutes to execute. For me, it has taken nine minutes to execute. So this will get executed. After this gets executed, what it does, this randomized search CV will find out the exact and the best parameter that will be used for solving the problem. Okay, so if you want to see the best parameter, you just have to, uh, you know, you use this keyword called as best underscore estimator underscore, and here you will be getting all the parameters that will be required. Okay, so now you can see, oh yeah, boost rate has been selected to GB tree, right? Initially, when I created XG boost, uh, my default, uh, you know, number of decision tree was somewhere around. Uh, uh, 100 but now it has selected 900 as its decision tree okay so this is a type of uh, hyperparameter optimization that you're doing in XGBoost and trust me guys I've done it for random forest I've done it for XGBoost and XGBoost again performed well with respect to this particular problem statement now once I was able to do that what I did after that is that I again initialized my XGBoost regressor I just copied this whole thing okay I just copied this whole thing over here I just copied this and then I initialize it again over here by pasting it over here. I just pasted it over here and it started working, you know. So after that, I executed this. I again did the fit uh, for my train and Y train. And I actually created a pickle uh, file for this. And what I did, I finally predicted my for my DF test. Now, this was my uh, Y pred. Okay, this was my basically my Y pred. Now, after I got my Y pred, what I have to do, I have to again create my sample submission. Okay, now here you can see the code, right? RF underscore pred I have written. This was for random forest. I had actually created another submission file, but it did not work well. Okay, so uh, I I created this sample submission dot CSV. Again, I went over here, I uploaded it, and you can see that my accuracy or my RMZ score, sorry, root mean square error was somewhere around 13498. Again, I'm telling you guys, I've noted the previous error. If you know that, my previous RM. Uh, I mean, root mean square error was 0.14155, which was giving us 2500 rank. Now, this is somewhere around uh, 2200 rank. Okay, sorry, it was not 21, it is 22. Now, just understand with the help of hyperparameter optimization, I was able to go ahead with 300 ranks, right? Now, the main thing is that you may be thinking, why I'm not going towards the feature and doing it? Why I'm just uh, playing with the model here? Guys, I always tell in some of my videos, do reverse engineering, right? So I have initially created my model, I've done my hyperparameter optimization and I have done till my best that could have done with that help of a model. Now I'm able to get 2200. So this I will just uh, take it as my base mark. Okay. Now what I'll do, I'll go towards the feature now and now I'll try to select the right features for solving this problem. It is not necessary that you have to take all the features guys. Now I'll select the best features to solve this particular problem and I have some ideas. I have some ideas. Let me just tell you some of the ideas. The first idea is that I'll use correlation to select features and when I'm using correlation, I'll try to relate that with the independent, uh, sorry, with the dependent feature and if there is a high correlation, I'll take those features. Apart from that, I'll also try to drop some columns with the help of feature uh, correlation. Now, you may be thinking how? There is a technique guys, just understand if two independent features are correlated with a higher value, that basically means both are both the feature are playing the same role. 
Okay, so in that case, what I can do is that I can drop one of the features. Okay, and that is what is my plan for my future class, uh, uh, which I'll be showing you in my next video. And I'll try to do that and see whether the accuracy will increase or not. But till here, whatever I have done, right? Whatever I have done is just a part. And again, I spend it out two hours for doing this, you know, for trying with each and every algorithm, uh, trying to do the hyperparameter optimization. Okay, I just spent two hours. So remember the first day I spent four hours, then two hours. Total six hours I have actually spent for this Kaggle, Kaggle competition. What you also have to do is that whenever you are actually performing a Kaggle competition, make sure you note down the time, how much time you are basically giving up. Because whenever you are performing in the next Kaggle competition, you will be able to compare how quickly you are able to do it and whether there is any improvement in you or not. Okay, so what I will do is that I also have one more idea. I'm, I'm planning to, you know, uh, now I know my predicted output, right, for my test data. Now, what I'll do is that I'll combine train and test data with the whole output. I will again train the XGBoost model. After training the XGBoost model, you know, what I'll do, the next thing is that I'll again predict for the test data. Now, you hear, I probably think that the accuracy will definitely increase again. Okay, and again, there's a whole lot of ways I'm trying to follow the best and the smartest way, which I'm actually trying to do. Now, you can see that I've already, you know, written code regarding correlation all over here. And I've also written one function, and this function says that within the independent feature, if your correlation is greater than 0.9, just delete it off. That basically means if two feature is having the same a correlation more than 90%, I'm saying that delete one of the feature. I don't require that. You know, and uh, that is what I'm still doing. Uh, and definitely I'll give you the updates till tomorrow. But I want to now combine both training and test data, you know, and then train my model and then see how the accuracy is basically coming. So uh, this was all about this particular videos, guys. And, um, you know, there's a, there, there are still a lot of questions uh, for you all that I mean, I mean, you basically have so many questions regarding it, how I've done it. But just understand, guys, I'm trying to follow the most smartest way. I will just do things. I'll do statistical analysis only when it is required. Okay. Right now, I know my model is performed well. It has come to 2200 ranking. But now I have some ideas. I want to implement that. If nothing is happening, then I'll go towards a feature and try to see, okay, which features I need specifically, which features I do not need specifically. And still, there are a lot of things that I'm going to do. One more thing that I want to give, uh, I want to suggest you guys, I'm not going to give you the code of hyperparameter optimization. I want you all to try this, okay, by yourself. Because I've already given the code of the whole thing, right? So what you have to do is that, try this. Take this, okay, try and try try to perform this randomized CV and try to see how you are basically performing, right? And whether you're able to get that accuracy or not. And upload it in the, you know, Kaggle over here in the submit prediction and just see whether you're getting a better rank, okay? I, I Again, I'm telling you guys, these are just two lines of code, I mean, there are many lines of codes are there, but just understand there are two cell blocks which I'm not giving it right now. You do it. I want you all to do it. All the code is written over here. Just write it down. Try to see how you can basically play with other pan, uh, play with other parameters. So this is all about this particular videos, guys. I hope you like this particular video. I hope you're loving this Kaggle competitions. Uh, please make sure you subscribe the channel. Um, and definitely, you know, uh, keep supporting the channel. I'll see you all in the next video. Have a great day ahead. Thank you one and all.